This video is a stark warning about agreements that you make with your friends, your family, boyfriend, girlfriend, or whomever. And I hope you take this warning seriously because it could have drastic effects on your life for many years to come. So welcome back, I'm the Black Belt Barrister, and in this video, a little bit of a warning to you. So you might find yourself at some stage in life with a friend, a relative, boyfriend, girlfriend, and so on, where they need to buy something on credit, but their credit rating is not good enough, and they ask you to put the item in your name instead. This is a recipe for disaster, because many, many times we've had cases where someone has a credit agreement in their name, but the item is actually in the possession of someone else. If there's a falling out and they fail to make payments or refuse to make any more payments, there's going to be serious damage to your credit rating, which is going to last for many years to come. In some cases where it is a vehicle on finance, the finance company may repossess the vehicle and that's going to leave a dent on your credit rating as well. But in other cases where it is purely an unsecured debt, even perhaps paid for on a credit card and you have to make repayments, or if it's a loan and you have to make repayments, then if the other person refuses to pay you back, you will then be left with the only option of going to court to make a claim against them to get them to pay the money back to you. But then you're going to have the difficulty in proving to the court that that was the agreement in the first place. Most often you won't have a written document saying this is what the agreement is, how long it's going to take them to repay you, what frequency and what kind of payments. Now it might be the case that you can persuade the court that there was such an agreement if you can show that there was this discussion between you and show to the court's satisfaction that there was an intention to create legal relations in the first place, a definitive contractual arrangement where they are going to repay you the money but this is going to be fairly difficult to prove. You're going to have to dig back into your old messages where the agreement might have been formed or emails where the agreement might have been formed. And this will also dispel myths that it doesn't have to be on a fully written out contract, although it's better if it is, much less signed. This thing doesn't need to be signed. Many people think a contract is not valid unless there is a signature. Now, whilst it is better that there is a signature and that can remove certain ambiguities, it doesn't have to have a signature to be binding. For example, an agreement by email, even a single line, is sufficient to uphold a claim in court. I can speak from experience where judgment has been handed down simply because of one line in an email where an offer was made from one company to another to say, we will offer you this service in exchange for this amount of money. And the company had replied and said, yes, that's fine. The service was provided and that was a contractually binding agreement in the eyes of the court. So if you find yourself in that situation where you are being asked to put credit and finance in your name on behalf of someone else, think very carefully about getting an agreement drawn up. If the other person is really uncomfortable and unhappy about you doing that, then I would say that is a warning sign that you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. If you're in the situation where that's already happened, then you can still draw this up and as agreement between you to confirm that that's what you did agree at the outset set before it gets to the stage that they stop paying you for it. And in that situation, you would also prefer that it's signed as well. Then this would be, at the very least, a record that you did agree that this was going to be repaid to you. So I hope this is useful. Share it with someone that you care about. And thanks for watching.